that my video is on. So that's good. All right. We're just adjusting the picture and there we go. Uh, my name's Kieran O'Donnell. I'm a senior project officer here at the Australian Building Codes Board um, and working together with uh, Richard and, and many others involved in this project, we've been putting together the um, new look for NCC 2022, which I'm gonna talk you through today. Um, before I go through those details, there's a couple of things I just wouldn't mind mentioning by way of background. The changes I'm going to take you through today were developed with the invaluable assistance of um, a working group that we put together that included representatives of both industry and regulators. Um, and that, that input has enabled us to come up with a proposal that we believe is, is um, workable and, and useful and will really, really do a lot of good for how people use the NCC. That working group included representatives of the Australian Institute of Building Surveyors, Australian Institute of Refrigeration, Air Conditioning and Heating, Housing Industry Association, Master Builders Association and the Victorian Building Authority. Um, further to that, we've also um, run these proposals through our Building Codes Committee and Plumbing Codes Committee, which brings into the fold a whole lot more um, of our key industry groups, as well as the other state and territory governments. We've also sought the agreement and received the agreement of our board to the proposed changes. As part of that, the um, board did request that we um, get a, a strategy together to assist people to navigate and understand and work their way through the changes that will be appearing in NCC 2022. And this webinar is a key part of that strategy to, to really sort of take people through it, step people through it, make sure everyone understands uh, the what and why of what we're doing. Uh, so I'll get into the agenda. There, there's going to be four parts to this and then a, um, a short series of closing remarks. The first part is going to cover the new uh, numbering system, which we call section part type clause or SPTC. Uh, there'll be some questions after that. Second part will go through our consistent volume structure initiative. And this is perhaps the, the most significant and noticeable change you'll see, particularly if you're a user of NCC Volume 2. Um, there will be questions after that too, of course. Following that, there will be um, two shorter sections, one of which will cover some changes we're making to the clause structures that we use within the NCC as part of the uh, readability and usability initiative. The last part will cover um, some minor adjustments and changes we're making to um, achieve compliance with the web content accessibility guidelines. I'll just take you through to the next slide. Uh, so the slide you're hopefully seeing now is just a um, screenshot of the improved NCC usability webpage on the ABCB website. Um, there'll be, and in fact, there already is a lot more uh, detailed materials and um, resources for you to, to get a, a, a bit more detail on, on the changes. Um, so without sort of further ado, um, I'll get straight into the first part of the presentation. And this is the SPTC uh, referencing system, section part type clause. Now, the logic behind this is that in the past, the NCC has used several different um, numbering systems between volumes, within volumes for different um, types of content. But to make the NCC recognisable, distinguishable, machine readable, consistent and easier to learn, we've devised a single numbering scheme that will apply across all three of the volumes. And that numbering scheme works in the way that um, you're hopefully seeing on the slide. Um, perhaps put a chat in if you're not, but the first part of it is the uh, section and part or the, the SP. So in the example you've seen, Section and part, section E um, will, will be the same as the current section that's called section E and part three, the third part of section E is part E3. That's the same as the current part E3. So in, in that sense, the, the, a, lot, a lot will change, but a lot will also remain the same. Where it does start to change and become different to what, what we're perhaps used to is the um, type indicator, which is the third 
uh, part of the clause number code. Um, so this example, the V in E3, V2. Uh, we, we've assigned a letter to each of the different types of clauses that are used in the NCC. So O for objectives, F for functional statements, um, they're the two guidance levels, P for performance requirement, V for verification method. Um, and then, and, and those, those letters have actually been used in the past. You would have known, uh, noticed if you're familiar with the current NCC that, that performance requirements, for example, already have um, the letter P in them. So for example, EP 3.1, we're just moving it around in, in the order to a more logical position. Um, the, the change then is that we've introduced two new letters, D for deemed to satisfy provision and G for governing requirements. And the, um, the beauty of doing that is that you can tell from looking at any clause number in the NCC exactly what type of clause it is based on the number alone without having to have any knowledge of the content. And that's going to be a, a huge leap in terms of quick recognition and usability and um, navigation. The last part of it, the clause component of the example, is simply numbered from one to whatever the last clause might be of that type in that part. So in the example E3V2, the two indicates that it's the second verification method within part E3. Now, there are a couple of other um, sort of specific parts of this that I'll just go through as well. Um, with volume two, and this sort of over, overlaps with the consistent volume structure a little bit too, um, volume two's section part numbers the sections will all start with h and the parts will be from h1 to i think h7 is the the last one um, and that will enable it to sort of mesh in with the um the numbering scheme we're using to avoid number clashes we'll be moving the existing uh section h content in volume one to the currently vacant section i designation within volume one so that way you'll be able to tell if the clause number starts with an H, it's for housing, homes, um, housing construction, and it's a volume two clause. Any clause that starts with H, be it H3D1 or H4P6, you know that's a volume two clause. The last part of the um, introduction on the clause numbering system is just to, um, go through what will happen with specifications. So the NCC currently has about 40 odd specifications attached to it. Um, those will be numbered from one to, well, 40, um, plus any new ones that might come about through technical changes. Um, and the numbering system for specifications will the, be S for specification, always S, then the spec number. So specification one, S1, then the clauses within the specification will be indicated with a C for clause and uh, then the clause number. Again, starting at one and finish at whatever the last clause will be within that specification. One thing we've done to help people navigate between the new and the old with this numbering system is at the top right hand corner of any clause within the public comment draft, you'll see a, another number with the prefix 2019, it's what we call an archive number. So it will tell you what the number of that clause was in NCC 2019, so that you can easily uh, reconcile where you are if you're used to the uh, previous numbering system. Of course, for any totally new clause, it'll simply be marked new for NCC 2022. Um, the, Benefits of doing this, which some of which I mentioned before, but I'll just go through them again quickly. This particular design, and we tried many different others during our research process, but this particular design was the, the simplest we could um, that retains as much of the existing numbers as possible, in particular section and part. It's easy to read, easy to understand, easy to reference, um, and allows the NCC to integrate into other programs and platforms and um, and achieve those benefits that Richard outlined in his introduction. Uh, so that's pretty much the walkthrough of the SPTC numbering system. So we might uh, from here go to our first round of questions on that uh, subject. Um, and if you've got a question, 
uh, please use the raise hand, hand function and uh, when Alex sees that, she'll unmute you. Okay. I can see a raised hand. Nearly one. My question relates to how do you refer to a specification within volume one? Okay, yep. Uh, so the, the way a specification will be referred to will be just using um, either the specification number, if you're referring to the entire specification, so specification 2 or specification 10 or whatever it might be. If you're referring to a particular clause within that specification, so let's say the 10th clause of specification 3, it'll be S3C10. And that will be what the, the cross-reference would look like within a, a clause that might refer to that specification. I will go to the next question. And actually, I could I also ask just people to um, just mention your name quickly at the start of asking your own question. Okay. Okay, look, we've got a question in the chat. So um, Alex is just going to read that one out for you. Uh, so Vass has asked, can we stay with EV 3.2 instead of E3 V2? Okay, thanks. Sorry to date. Vass. Thanks, Vass. Um, no, that's a good question. The reason why we've um, gone to the, the, the order that we have, so E3, V2, is to actually put them in order of precedence. So the biggest part is the first part, the section, then you've got the part within the section, the clause type within the part, the number of clauses within there. Uh, and, and that's why we've moved to that uh, system for referencing. One. Right, we're just checking the raise hands and chat to see if there's any other further questions on that topic. And I don't think there is. No? All right, well, look, we'll, we'll move on to the next part so we can keep going. If someone was trying to get a, get a question in there, I'll put it in the chat and we'll um, catch up with it following the presentation. Um, there we go. Okay, so the next the next part of this is the consistent volume structure for NCC 2022. This is perhaps the um, one of the biggest changes that we're making, and it's a really important one, and it was one that was a key recommendation of the NCC readability review uh, that was carried out and its recommendations were adopted by our board a couple of years ago. Um, I'm going to go through a little bit of the background on that. So as you probably know, volume two was developed as a, a sort of a standalone housing code type document in the mid 1990s and it was designed to be uh, simple and easy to navigate for people on site. Um, it's, it's deemed to satisfy solutions which is divided into two, um, two separate pathways. So you had the acceptable construction practice, which was a simplified solution that would work for most, but generally not all um, situations on site and the acceptable construction manual option, which was perhaps for the more complex situations and that would direct you to the relevant Australian standard. With the new consistent volume structure, while we will be bringing volume two into a structure that's the same as volumes one and three, we will also be retaining that option of either using an acceptable construction practice or an acceptable construction manual. However, the terminology will change. 
So instead of seeing a, um, the, the terms ACM or ACP, uh, there'll be a deemed to satisfy provision that will give you the option of either using the relevant Australian standard, what used to be the ACM, or going to uh, the relevant chapter of a document that we're calling the ABCB housing provisions. So the ABCB housing provisions is going to gather together all of the content that was previously in the acceptable construction practices and package that up of a document of about 12 uh, separate chapters that will um, contain that previous ACP content. And that ABCB housing provisions document will be uh, referenced from the deemed to satisfy provisions. So in, in volume two, so you'll have where there was previously an option of using either ACM or ACP, that option will still exist. It will say either go to AS1234 or go to chapter four of the ABCB housing provisions. Where there was only an ACM, there'll still only be an ACM. Where there was only an ACP, there'll just be a reference to the relevant chapter of the uh, ABCB housing provisions. Um, and the, the way that we're going to be laying out this um, consistent volume structure version of volume two with its um, attended ABCB housing provisions document will almost exactly replicate the existing order of content in volume two. So the, the parts within volume two, they will follow the parts within section two of the existing volume two, they'll follow that order. The chapters and the clauses within the ABCB housing provisions will largely follow the order that they're presented in the current section three of NCC volume two. As with other, um, as with the, the SPTC that I went through earlier, clauses within both the uh, re restructured volume two and the ABCB housing provisions will have a um, archive number above them to indicate what that clause used to be in NCC 2019 volume two. Um, the diagram you know, hopefully all see and gives a bit of a visual of what I've just gone through. Uh, so to the left of that diagram, you can see what will be in volume two itself. It'll have the section A governing requirements that are consistent across all three volumes. It'll have a section H, which will contain the seven parts within which there'll be the performance requirements, the deemed to satisfy provisions, verification methods, etc. And where those deemed to satisfy provisions then refer out to the ABCB housing provisions, the layout of that document that contains all the acceptable construction practice content is to the right of the diagram. And you can see there the order of the list of the uh, 12 standards or 12 chapters follows pretty much the order of the existing parts within section three. Um, the, Shifting that out to a separate standard has been necessary and important so that we can actually have the volumes themselves run along the same structure all the way through, while also um, keeping that ACP content in the way that people are used to. And that's necessitated bringing it into a separate document. That ABCB uh, housing provisions document uh, will be referenced from volume two. It will have the same status as volume two. It is a part of the NCC. Um, and of course, it will be freely available on the ABCB website to all NCC subscribers, just like the NCC volumes. So it will all be there. It will just be in a different document. And of course, being on an online uh, setup, the, the access to the housing provisions will be quite seamless. It will be a click through. Uh, sort of system for that. So it should be quite easy to navigate and find your way around. Um, one more thing just to note with the housing provisions, I mentioned earlier that often ACPs are limited in their, their scope or have been limited in their scope to, to certain building parameters. Those limitations and the, the scope of use of the housing provisions will be spelled out quite clearly in the volume two to satisfy provision that will call up the relevant chapter. So it'll always be clear what you can use the housing provisions for and when, what the parameters are around it. Um, 
Look, I don't think there's anything else I need to mention on the um, consistent volume structure other than just to mention it is a big change. We've made it as um, as seamless and as, as close to the familiar structure as we can, but it's also a really necessary change so that we have an NCC that is consistent, that is machine readable, that is human readable, perhaps more importantly, and that is fully functional in an online um, environment. And that, that's probably it for my remarks around the consistent volume structure. Uh, we'll go to questions from here. Uh, yeah, we'll go to questions in the chat if we have not. Uh, we've got a raised hand for Deborah, uh, also a George. So we might go to the raised hands first. Yeah. Oh, hi. Yeah, it's Deborah Worsley Pine here from uh, Victoria. Um, is that going to be a four volume NCC with the housing acceptable practice? construction practice? Um, so it won't be a fourth volume as such, but the ABCB housing provision standard will be a part of the NCC package. Um, perhaps another way to think about it is it's, it's, it's a reference document of volume two. So in a similar way to Australian standards of reference from volume two, but in this case, it's produced by the ABCB and it's part of the freely available online package. Um, Thank you. Next question. Um, is it George? Yep. I'd like to um, just query um, just the 12 standards. They will be freely accessible uh, just as in, as we are under the current scenario with the NCC, and absolutely, and when will be the time frame? Uh, so, yeah, that they, they will be free as part of the NCC. Um, so, in full, online on the website time frame, you'll be able to see all of these um, ABCB standards or all of the content of the housing provision standard as part of the NCC 2022 public comment draft in full. So you'll see the black text and you'll see the track changes that will come about through other projects on the ABCB work program. It will all be there. Thank you. Okay. Uh, um, uh, probably I'm a bit late for asking this question regarding the um, how our um, whole, uh, you know, code is structured. Uh, I have a suggestion, maybe, you know, you just, if you want to note it down, uh, you know, when we are um, trying to find information, it would be better for someone like myself who is just getting into the industry, that part E should, you know, I don't know how it is like, you know, section wise, part E should be energy efficiency and part H should be health and amenities. If it is starting with the initial, then it will be very easy for any person to actually navigate straight on to that part. And, and part B should be instead of structure, building structure, you know, it can be formulated in a way that even a newcomer can go straight on to that part where it yeah. yeah. Yep. No, I, I get what you're saying, and uh, and and it's a good suggestion. Um, there's a lot of logic behind it, and it's certainly something we considered in our research stage. But the the I guess the obstacle we came up against was, long story short, running out of letters. So if you take something like the energy efficiency example that you gave, let's say let's say section E was for energy efficiency, yeah. that 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 worked quite well until you. Um, come up with something like uh, emergency egress or um, yeah, things like that. And, and, and similar issues crop up with the other letters. They, they tend to get repeated. And once you get down into the part level, that, that problem gets worse. So 
we we decided instead to um, sort of go for familiarity in terms of the existing section and part letter number designations. Appreciate though that yeah, it can be a bit to get across if you're new to it. Next question. So we're, we're just bringing the next question to around. Load ahead. Okay, now we're going to chat questions. Um, so. Um, okay, we have a question from Joshua Knight, uh, which is, are you going to list the building classes with descriptions on the electronic volume covers? Uh, yeah, I think we will in, in the same way we do with the current electronic volume covers. Um, so that, that will be there. So another question from another question. Uh, Perry was, do we need to add V1, V2, V3 front of the SPTC reference? Um, no, you shouldn't. And there's two reasons for that. Um, the first is between volumes one and volume two, there will be no number clashes. So you'll know that you're in a volume two clause because the SPTC code will start with H. Similar with volume one, if it's any of the other letters, B to G or I to J, um, they, they will be used only for volume one. Where there is a potential for clashes is between volumes one and three. However, that's perhaps less likely than um people work in between volumes one and two okay yep all right one more one more question just coming through the chat now um andrew hon has asked whether section h is now in section i in volume one yep it is so section it's the current section h content of volume one Parts H1 to H3, I think it is. They cover class nine buildings, uh, public transport buildings and farm buildings. They will move over to become section I, parts I1 to I3. That's been made possible because the current section I designation is vacant, um, having been deleted some years ago. So we'll be moving it across. Sorry, Kieran, just one more question, which will mark off a few people at the same time. A few people are asking about whether NCC 2022 will be available to buy in a hard copy and whether it will be available in a PDF. Okay, uh, Okay. Um, so NCC 2022 will be available in a PDF. Um, as to the hard copy purchase, the ABCB no longer um, prints hard copies and sells them ourselves. However, I do understand that we have a number of third party publishers that will in all likelihood continue to uh, make the NCC available as a hard copy through their channels. Okay, um, I think we're on to the next part of the show. And we've got 20 minutes left, so I'm gonna make this quick. Um, this next part just covers uh, some changes that we're making to the way we structure clauses within the NCC. The diagram you've got on your screen there has a before and after, and it, it just has blocks sort of representing the text, but there's a reason for that. So if you look in the before, you can see an indication there where there's the start of a list, but then there's a box in the middle of it. Then the list keeps going. Then there's a table breaking up that list but then the list keeps going after the table, broken up again by an image, another box, then the list keeps going. This, this can become quite difficult to follow. And one of the changes that was recommended to us out of the readability review was to have a consistent and, and logical clause structure. And that, that's what you see on the right-hand side or the after um, image. It's the same clause content, but the subclauses go first, any boxes, be it application, limitation, things like that, second. After that, any associated tables, after that, any associated diagrams. And so that, that um, layout will, <coughs> will, will happen throughout the NCC. And, and the advantage of that is it's predictable. You've only got to learn it once, 
you know where where things will occur and you don't have this issue of lists sort of breaking up and and coming back in again i'm just going off of my notes to get to the other couple of things i need to mention the other thing we'll be doing as part of our changes to simplify the clause structure is we'll be um, numbering the sub clauses differently to list items. In the past, they've been numbered in the same way. So where a clause is divided in, into two or more sub clauses, they'll be numbered with a one in brackets. Where a, um, a list of items is contained within a clause or a sub clause, they'll use the lowercase a, b, c, and so on. There'll be only three list levels. So the lowest level of list will be um, list level three or capital A. So I'll go lowercase a, Roman numeral I, capital A. And that will be it. So we'll be simplifying the list structures so that we don't have um, issues where lists go down five, six, seven levels and it, it, it can become quite difficult to follow. Uh, a couple of other just, I suppose, minor adjustments is the, um, clause left blank and the five stars and things that have been put in sometimes when a deletion's occurred, um, we'll take it out. They're no longer necessary in an online format. Now, being aware of the um, time that we're, we're chewing through quite quickly, I'm gonna to go to questions now and that we will. And I should also mention again that that clause number from 2019 will be at the top right hand side. In fact, you can see it in that after diagram on the screen there. I just forgot to mention it before. That's it there. If you can see the mouse, it's um, hovering around that part of the diagram. Thanks, Richard. We'll go to questions. Okay, look, we haven't got any raised hands, but we'll go to the questions that are in the chat. Um, I'll be read out shortly. Uh, so we have a question from Doug McLennan. Um, can there be a pro forma template BCA assessment checklist provided? Um, so I, I, I'm guessing this is a checklist for assessing compliance with the BCA. Look, there, there won't be um, as part of this work but the work that we're doing will make those kind of things a lot easier to devise and set up um, independently of the BCA. Got another chat question there? Uh, we have a question from Greg Evans, whether the hyperlinks will be retained? Yes, they will. Hyperlinks will continue to function. Um, in fact, may be improved. Another question is on its way. Oh, we're just finding the next question within the chat function. Okay, look, I, I, so far, I don't think we have any more questions on that topic. Again, if you think of one later on, send it to the email address that will be in the chat, or um, we'll, we'll get to it. Oh, we've got one question. Okay, great. Let's go to that question. Uh, so Mark Shulman is asking whether the word search function online will be improved. Yeah, it will. Yep. Part of having the NCC format consistent and machine readable and um, predictable is to enable things like that to actually work better than perhaps they have in the past. Actually, I'm going to. Richard's gonna just going to jump in because it's a bit of a um, a digital uh, question, so it's it's one I'll, I'll turn yeah, to Richard right. to on that Thanks. one. Thanks. This is hardcore technology moving one computer from one person's face to another um <laughs> just in in relation to that search query it's it's quite good actually um so what we're hoping to do is integrate uh an, effectively an offshoot of google's search 
within the NCC online. So we'll have all the power of Google search, but it will be restricted to just NCC online content. Hopefully with the world's best search engine doing the job for us, you should be able to find what you're looking for by typing in the keywords that you think are most relevant. I think that should answer that and I'll send it back to Kieran. Wow. Oh, uh, just switch back there. All right. Um, so Richard's just moved my papers around. I'll just move them back again. And if there's no more questions, we'll get on to the last part of the show. And this is perhaps the um, smallest part. Actually, I just wanted to go through a couple of um, issues there. That's actually in the wrong order. Um, sorry about this. Just had a little bit of a uh, press the wrong button sort of situation. The last part, the um, changes that we're making to improve the um, web content. Ability of the NC. And this is something that accessibility guidelines, assistive technology to. Um, and for that technology to work well for them. What the main parts of the changes that we're making to the NCC to enable it to work better with that assistive technology is to eliminate what we call floating paragraphs, um, which I'll take you through an example in a sec, and also um, to resolve the use of tables so that they're used in a way that is better suited to that technology, but also a way that's better suited to the actual purpose of table, which is to present data um, in a tabulated form rather than as a way to arrange text that, that really should be paragraphs. So the next slide gives you a little bit of an example of a floating paragraph and, and, the, and the issue with these. Um, what you can sort of see here is you've got a lead into that D2.20 clause it starts a list, the list is broken up by this line, if it is likely to impede, etc. Then the list takes off again, then it, it jumps back in again, and so on. You can see how, how that could be quite complex to follow, and, and it's, it's difficult to follow using technology, it's difficult to follow just as a human being trying to read a document. And so we've restructured a number of clauses to eliminate this floating paragraph issue, but without changing the technical intent of the clause. Um, and and that, that in turn re reduces other risks associated with the use of floating paragraphs. For example, they're very de dependent on visual presentation and indenting working as planned. If it doesn't, they can become quite confusing. So we take that uncertainty out of the picture. You'll see in the public comment draft where these sort of restructure, restructures have happened. Um, there's not a lot of them. There's a few of them there. Um, so it all be there to see. The other thing we're working with is to um, make sure that the tables that we present in the NCC comply with the web content accessibility guidelines. What I've got here is an example from the existing NCC of a table that's accessible. It has a single header row, the, the columns are clearly defined, the content within each of the cells is tabular data. I use the word data, but that doesn't mean just numbers. It can also include words, as you can see in this example. So that, that's the sort of tables that we're trying to achieve to meet that WK compliance. The next slide is going to show you what we're uh, trying to move away from. And it, it, it's another example from the existing NCC. So what we have here is a table that's effectively been used to kind of construct a clause as it were um, to the point where there's even an alphabetical list sort of within that table. The issue is it's got, it's got multiple header rows. It's actually got a note box interrupting the cells at the other end. Below that box, you can't quite see it, but it's there is another header row. This all gets very confusing for users of assistive technology. There's also an issue that's perhaps more obvious just visually, and that's in the way it renders and presents. So the barrier height location for item B 
the minimum height's gone missing at first glance it's it's not there now if, if you if you know the content you know quite in depth and you've been around this for a while you'll realize the intention was that it should have been a merge cell with that 865 millimeters above it but for whatever reason that hasn't quite worked so these sort of tables where it's it's just an arrangement of text it's not really data it's actually a series of paragraphs in in boxes this is the sort of thing we're moving away from firstly for um accessibility but also for just for readability and and um presentation of the code in a way that's that's user friendly um this doesn't mean that tables will sort of go from one table into a dozen tables. Um, we will be keeping the splitting of tables to an absolute minimum, but there will be cases where it's necessary and um, that will be shown in the public comment draft. Now, look, I think we're pushing for time a little bit, so I'm gonna cut to questions um, if there are any on this one. And I can see a couple of hands up. So this is Frank. Okay, we'll go to Frank. Uh, just, just getting to you there, Frank. Thanks, Karen. Uh, Frank Torchick, Melbourne Polytechnic. Um, I was actually hoping for more mm. radical change in the in the NCC. Um, we teach it all the time. So we're, we're just struggling to get audio of you there. Just give us a sec to. Um... Okay, go ahead. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, look, it's Frank Torchick from Melbourne Polytechnic, and um, we teach the code extensively in our building surveying course. Excellent. And we have um, lots of students here today on in, in the webinar. Uh -huh. I've got a very radical suggestion for you for the NCC, okay? Okay. Whenever we go to a certain class or de uh, dealing with a class of building, say a class two or a class nine or whatever, we have to chop and change around and eliminate a lot of the other classes before we can get to the nitty gritty that applies to the class that we want. How about, since it's an e-resource now, putting everything for one class in one section and then do the same for the other sections? Yeah, look, we're, we're, it's, it's a brilliant suggestion and it's a, a fantastic idea and it's an idea we're actually going to be acting upon in a way um, so that the ability will be there to do that. I'm going to get Richard to take you through the details because it's another one of those tech questions that he's far better at answering than I am. So I'll just slide the computer over to Richard and he'll be right with you. Hey Frank, I'm thrilled that you asked this question. It makes me personally very happy because that's exactly one of the things that we've been working towards. Now that we've got the NCC in a consistent volume structure, and that the clauses themselves have a consistent structure within the clause, and we've got a universal numbering system, uh, the NCC is primed to be treated less as three books and more as regulatory technology. That means we can assign metadata to every single clause in the National Construction Code. What we're planning to do by the time NCC 2022 is adopted is to allow practitioners like yourselves to go to NCC online, select the state that they're in, the climate zone of the building project they're working on, the building classifications that apply to that project and press a button and it will strip out every single clause that is not related to your specific building project. Around our office, we're calling it the build your own code. So hopefully that should do pretty much exactly what you want, but in an even better way. Oh, that's awesome, Karen. Yeah, because that's Great. what we have to do. That's what we actually have to do in class to actually understand the code rather than chop and change. We've got to go through the code and pick out the relevant sections to the class. Then we can actually work with the actual project that we're dealing with. Yeah, no, I understand where you're coming from, Frank. I um, have a diploma of building design myself and went through exactly that experience as a student. So I'm right with you on that one. We'll go to the next question. Okay, yeah, yep, yeah, I can see, it. see you there. And go ahead. 
This is um, Gossie here. I've just got a question. Why is the NCC still referencing documents that are copyright protected if this whole thing is about making it accessible for designers to use the um, instruments? Yeah, no, look, it's, it's a question strategy. we get a bit. And it's, um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with making a reference to a document that's copyright protected. That's not the same as copying the document. The But the main um, issue with that is that Things such as Australian standards are not produced by the ABCB. In fact, they're not produced by the government at all. To take the example of Standards Australia, Standards Australia is a private organisation. How they publish and fund themselves and distribute their documents is up to them. It's not something we can sort of tell them to do um, or not do. And so the content that we have control of, we make free on our website, as you'll have seen, and, and we'll continue yep. to do that. But with things like Australian standards, we, we don't have a lot of say in that, unfortunately. But the problem is that the building industry is one of the only industries, I think, that's forced to pay to access legislation. And here we are in a situation where people are not building to codes. It seems like it could be part of the problem. Yeah, look, I, I appreciate the frustration with that one. Um, and it's one that we're well aware of and, and, and others are well aware of, but um, it's not something I can sort of comment too much further on within this forum. Um, but yeah, appreciate the frustration, definitely. We'll go to the next question. This is Carl again. Okay. Caldeep, go ahead. Sorry for coming back again. Um, you okay. know, if it is not um, um, in instantly like available, you know, sometimes some someone wants to stick to the older version of this um, e thing. If there is uh, with the Google, you know, a filter, or if you don't want to do the separate parts, uh, if there is a system of filtering out all the information, you know. In the in the in the building code, so as you have mentioned, you know, put your uh, um, wind classification or your uh, whatever the, the building we are in cl uh, wind class, um, the building class one, two, three, or whatever it is. So it will filter out everything if it is available online, uh, which you know only that part will remain on the screen if we have this e version of it. Does it make um. sense? Yeah, look, I, I think I'm, I'm understanding the question there. The, the use of the filtering functions will be voluntary, of course. Um, so you'll be able to see the whole thing if you want to see the whole thing. The archive numbers are a part of that metadata that Richard mentioned. So you should be able to search it by archive number. Um, and yeah, as, as an e-publication, I think that's the term. Um, yeah, there, there will be that ability to strip out what's not relevant. I, I hope I've answered the question. If I haven't, perhaps follow it up with um, an email and we can work through it a bit more that way. Um, if we've got another question coming up, one more question. Righto. And we're just uh, getting to your question there. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Okay, I think we've lost Silliman, so we'll just have a quick look, see if we've got any more raised hands, and if not, a quick scan of the chat. Yeah. Okay, look. Okay, we have a question from Salima. Um, what changes will be made to the volume one guide in view of the changes? Okay, yeah, no, that's a good question. Thanks, uh, Solomon. So the, the guide's going to um, reflect the changes that, that we've, we've just gone through. Of course, the guide only concerns itself with volume one. So um, really what you'll, you'll see is the um, SPTC numbering system in the guide. But besides that, it will pretty much be the guide as as you know it because um, the guide's a, a, a different kind of document it's it's really much more just um headings and paragraphs and diagrams and things so yeah it'll continue on in its in its current form just with new numbers we've got another raised hand here true in fact and i might just before we go to those questions i will just note we we have hit the one hour mark um so we'll yeah, we'll, 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 we'll wrap it up soon, but 
go ahead, Krishna. Uh, hi, uh, yeah, it's Chris Easton from Cornerstone Building Certification. Um, just curious to see whether or not uh, consideration has been made in relation to integrating the NCC into data assessment programs. Um, that, that would be a really handy thing to be able to do, particularly if we're able to, as you said, strip out certain requirements and then produce it into a checklist specific for your building classifications, but then also to be able to produce a, uh, a really nice, concise report that can go out with the building approval documentation as a, as a guide or an assistance to the builders and so forth on site, specifically yeah. the changes to flashings and the like. We're seeing a lot of lag in the adoption of changes to legislation by the building industry. Okay, yeah, no, it's a great. A great resource. So it's a great point. I'm going to hand over to Richard because um, this is this is his domain and he'll give you a much better cool. answer than I could. Thank you. Hi, Chris. Thanks again for that question. Look, it's a, it's a great one and it's exactly what we want to have happen. So part of this information architecture project that has done all of this consistent volume structure work and re-engineered and restructured the NCC has been done so that we can generate this content as regulatory technology data and we're going to give that freely to third-party providers like software developers so they can do exactly what you're asking for now the one thing we can't do is jump into the software development space as much as i'd like to personally um, <laughs> as, as the government body that's just, uh, that's really responsible for writing the national construction code we've done this in such a way that we're really hoping that industry um, software vendors will take this data and use it to build new and innovative technologies that will integrate the NCC into their systems. So while I can say, no, the ABCB is not going to be doing that for you, what I can say is we're absolutely open to giving the NCC away in this really nice, clean XML format to software developers. So if you know any, get them on board, get them in contact with us. We'll give them the NCC for free. They sign a piece of paper and then they can create software which they can market to you guys and to builders and certifiers to do all of those kinds of things. That's yeah, really that's where we want the NCC to go. Yeah, perfect. Now that, that certainly would be a great way to actually push those new changes into the NCC that's happening now into an industry that is you know, traditionally more used to using nails and hammers as opposed to computers and the like. So you know, sometimes it's just all about keeping it simple and, and providing a very basic outline of the changes and then we can fill it in from there. Also yeah, I mean, that. There's, there's even a document that goes back to 1980 or something um, that pictured an architect working at his CAD software, moving a door with an alert saying, sorry, you've exceeded the minimum safe distance from a fire escape. Yeah, that's what we wanted to do as per, you know, NCC Volume 1, D2, B1 or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's, no, that's what we would like it to see. Right. Yep, perfect. No worries. Oh. Thank you. Okay. Um, did we have another question queued up or, or are we going to chat? Okay. All right. No, look, um, we are 10 minutes over time. Um, really appreciate the enthusiasm from everyone and the great questions and, um, and most of all, just taking time out of your day to hear what we've got to say and he hear the, the explanations that we've offered and, and to ask you your, your questions on the project. Um, I'll just sort of wrap it up. I've misplaced my notes. Um, so just a couple of things. Yeah, thanks again for making the time. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Alex and our communications team for... Uh, getting this show on the road and, and Richard for uh, facilitating and jumping in with a few um, answers that are a bit outside of my domain. Um, and the last thing to note is just don't forget that today's webinar forms a part of the supporting materials and the, and the strategy that we've undertaken to help people get through these changes and understand them and, and um, engage with it. And um, the resources and, and, and so on will be at abcb.gov.au slash ncc usability. Um, the web address will be, sorry, I've just realised I've forgotten to change my slide. <laughs> um, there it is. That's the address I just read, read out. The resources are all there. The link will also be provided in the chat. 
Uh, once again, thank you, everyone, and have a good day.